Margaret Warner takes the story from there. For more on why Arab leaders are stepping up the pressure on Syria, we're joined by Michelle Dunn, formerly at the State Department and National Security Council, now director of the Atlantic Council's Middle East Center, and Shibli Telhami, a professor of government and politics at the University of Maryland. He conducts public opinion surveys in the Middle East and has just returned from a polling trip there. Welcome both of you back to the program. First, let's start with today's news, Michelle Dunn, King Abdullah saying if he were Assad, he would be stepping aside right now. Why would he speak up now? Well, I think for uh, King Abdullah, first of all, Syria has always viewed Syria as more of a threat than a friend to Jordan. Uh, and he's he's responding to public opinion within his own country uh, that is against the Syrian regime and also to Saudi Arabia. Jordan is extremely close to Saudi Arabia and the Saudis have now taken a pretty hard stance against Bashar al-Assad. So King Abdullah is, is placing himself in alignment there. Which takes us then to the Arab League vote, Shibli Tahami, on Saturday. Most accounts called it unexpected. What explains the Arab League taking on essentially one of its core members? Well, it's interesting because uh, it was unexpected. I mean, Arab League is usually very conservative on those issues. When it took a position on Libya, it was seen to be an exception to the rule. Uh, so this was very unusual. But there are two things going on here. One is a little bit of score settling particularly among the powerful members of the Arab League at the moment, including the GCC, particularly Saudi the Arabia, Gulf the Gulf Cooperation Council. Council. But there is public opinion. Everybody is terrified by public opinion. And if you look at the way the sentiment has changed over the past year, there's no question that it's soured on the Syrian government. I mean, in, in the case of Jordan in particular, uh, I just received the public opinion poll from Jordan that I'm releasing next Monday in, in the context of big Arab public opinion poll. Overwhelmingly, the Jordanians are opposed to taking the side of demonstrators against the government in, in, in Syria. Everybody is nervous about that, and I think they're responding, just like everybody else. Every government is trying to respond. The Arab League is trying to respond, even though it is a League of Arab States. But Michelle Dunn, this is a group of nations that has never been hugely responsive to public opinion in the past, and they often have not spoken out against atrocities by fellow members. Is this all a, a result of the Arab uprising? Because they're all nervous now about their own position? Well, very much so. I think that uh, they are concerned about, about public sentiment in the region and not showing themselves to be too much out of step. Uh, I think the Arab states, are a lot of them are also concerned about a changing strategic regional picture. And, you know, the interesting thing here is that the Arab leaders are, uh, they're placing their bets against Bashar al-Assad. They seem to think that he's going to go, and they want to be on the right side of that and have Syria aligned with them, no longer with Iran and not with Turkey, for example. They want to have Syria with the Arab states if there's going to be a new Syria. Is the Iranian-Syrian competition for influence in the region, Shibli Tahami, part of the underlying sort of strategic calculations of some of these countries? Oh, there's no question. I mean, uh, when I say score settling, it's part of the strategic mm -hmm. score settling. I mean, you have to take Syria into histo in historic perspective. Uh, dating back to the 1980s war between Iraq and Iran, where the, most of the Arab states supported Iraq in that war, Syria was the only one who took uh, Iran's side. And obviously, you know, more of late, there's been a strategic relationship between Iran and Syria. The Hezbollah factor in Lebanon is a huge factor for some of them, uh, including by the Jordan, Syrians. but especially the Saudis, uh, where there is a lot of competition. It's it, interesting because in Lebanon itself, you know, the, the public is very divided on Syria. Let me just go on to now the effect this is likely to have. Now, a lot of the Arab League officials said, we're not trying to do what we were trying to do with Libya. We're not trying to set the stage for international intervention. But could it lead to that? Well, I think there are several things that this Arab League move will lead to. First of all, they are trying to get the Syrian opposition a little bit more unified. They've invited the Syrian opposition leaders to come to Cairo and have some conversations with the Arab League because there's still a significant rift between the opposition inside and outside of Syria and between civilians and those who left the, the Syrian military. So that's an issue. But I think uh, the, the Arab League decision will maybe have more effect outside 
of Syria. For example, there's the question of whether Turkey will place economic sanctions on Syria, whether the Arab League states will, and whether Russia and China will now come under more pressure to go along with other members of the international community, for example, in a UN Security Council resolution against Syria. But if Assad defies this latest pressure mm -hmm. move, then what does the Arab League do next? And are they taking a bit of a gamble here that they are calling Assad's bluff, but he could turn around and call their bluff? It's a slippery slope. And, and, and the, the problem for them, too, is that while Arab public opinion is decidedly against Assad, they don't want to see international intervention in Syria. Because? And even on Libya. And even why? Because of the... There is still a very deep suspicion of the intention of international mm -hmm. intervention. And even in, in, in the, you know, in my polling, I ask a question of whether they think the intervention in Libya, in retrospect, has been a good one or not. In Jordan and, Lib uh, and Lebanon, they're still divided on this one. They, they're still suspicious of the international intervention. And so there is a, there, there is a problem. However, if you take aside the Libya intervention, you can imagine, for example, a safe haven type intervention. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, and that's the kind of incrementalism that could be, don't think Libya model, think a different model. And I think in, eventually, if, this, if the killing continues, I see an escalation that will lead to some kind of uh, international step in Syria. So very briefly, we only have about 30 seconds. What impact is this going to have on Assad? I don't think he'll respond to this. He hasn't responded to a lot of other initiatives. So it makes him more isolated, but I don't expect to see him changing his tactics uh, toward the uprising because of this. What do you think? If it, it's, the real interesting question is what his elders will do, the people mm -hmm. who are around him. Are they going to throw him under the bus at some point, like the Egyptian military threw, the, threw Mubarak under the bus? That's really the interesting question. For now, they've decided not to do so. Shibli Talhami and Michelle Dunn, thank you both. You're welcome.